Hey, 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 Christian friends. How are y'all doing tonight? Um, you know what time it is. It is pop-up time. So I decided I wanted to pop up and pop on and give my word. Um, I have been going over, again, some uh, some words that really have been sticking with me and just speaking to me. And I'm just like, I don't want to uh, allow every little thing to make me procrastinate on getting the word out there. So I was like, you know what, because I, I could have waited and said, I'll wait till another day when the time is right. But, you know, the word does say that, you know, be prepared to to speak the word when the time is favor favorable or not. So I, I figured that I better just be obedient because, again, if the word is something that really stuck out with me that I wanted to put out there, then, you know, why hold on to it? And maybe somebody needs to hear it. And maybe that somebody is myself. Uh, so that way, maybe one day I can just look back on my videos and be able to encourage myself. But I do hope that I'm also able to encourage even if it's just one. You know, Paul, when he was out there ministering to many, he had to uh, be many things to many. And, and uh, uh, how you say it, become like all just to save even some. I mean, even when he was out there doing what he was doing and he was uh, a very... Um, determined person when the Lord touched him to to minister to the Gentiles and you know changed his life and worked in him to be the one to go out there to preach the good news to the Gentiles for him to be uh, as uh, how he had become that strong and powerful in, in his word and doing what he was doing no matter what no matter the persecution he was out there touching you know many and trying to speak to many and like he said he had to become like all just to save some not even to save all of the people <clears throat> and so you know who am i but i'm still just someone out there who's a, a sinner that's you know the lord has worked in them and has changed them i'm so i'm no different than nobody out there but at the end of the day, if, if if me saying or me speaking the truth and just speaking my truth of what I've, how the word speaks to me and the revelation of the word comes to me, if me speaking out there and putting it out there can help just one, save just some, you know, like Paul did, then that, you know, I just, I got to do that. I got to do my part and not just allow every little thing to make me procrastinate on getting the word out there. So we, and even if it takes a while before somebody run across it and get touched by it, then I, you know, I've done my part. So tonight's pop-up Bible study, I kind of wanted to come from the book of Romans, uh, where it was, uh, is talking about struggling with sin. All right. And Lord, first, I want to say, Lord, just work in me with this because I didn't dig a whole lot into it. But when I was just taking my moments and times to just study the word and look at the word to try to just learn and understand better. Um, this here really stuck with me because it's something that I can relate to. It's something that I deal with a lot. And, you know, if, if any of you all are just like myself, a person who's trying to draw near to God, trying to change their ways, trying to, again, uh, let the spirit work in you and try not to conform to the world and, and allowing the Lord to change the way that you think. And you're trying to train to be godly and you're just on that journey and that new path of just trying to turn around, turn your life around and throwing off your old self and putting on your new self. Um, if you're much like me, because again, you want that you want to continue in this journey, right? Because you realize you don't got a taste of the Lord, like the word said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So you have tasted what it is to be on this new journey in God and in Christ, because the journey that you were once on when you were your old self, you see what that that journey got you, right? You see that it got you still rejection and got you still anger and uh, it still got you Lead, led to depression and it just led you still nowhere trying to please the world and being friends with the world which made you an enemy of God so you know the difference in that journey even though it didn't mean that in the new path of your new self it doesn't mean that everything gonna be perfect it doesn't mean that you're still not gonna slip up or you're not, still not gonna miss the mark or make mistakes you're still gonna mess up but you your heart has changed because you like you definitely carefully determine what pleases the Lord. And I'm going to be honest, like at one point in time, because I wasn't living to please the Lord, I was living for myself. I was, you know, a slave to sin in which I thought that was freedom because uh, I thought I was enjoying life. But still life still brought on a lot of disappointments and self um, and stuff. But, um, you know, just when I realized now, like, OK, I was really a slave to sin. 
honestly now in this new changed me just this new person who i am i'm scared to sin like i'm scared to make mistakes and mess up and i know and i'm laughing about it because like literally like before it didn't matter like i was just doing what i wanted to do in you know to please live in the pleaser world just answering to my flesh and just whatever whatever not saying i was out there just being deliberately sinful but i didn't carefully determine what was going to please the lord and a lot of the decisions that i was making when it came to just my worldly um decisions or my carnal mind and my carnal thoughts and what the flesh was prompting me to do i didn't listen i didn't i was just going for that and i was being hasty in a lot of my decisions and wasn't thinking and that's why it brought me to the road that i ended up being on and i so i understand it but listen i, I ain't playing with y'all like i'm literally scared to sin like i'm scared to mess up like i'd be like oh lord just every little thing but I got to also remember that word where Paul said that, you know, uh, you foolish Galatians, now that you are made new in the spirit, why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? Which pretty much means like you, you still gonna, you gonna still make mistakes. You, you go, you can't, you can't change and be who, you know, the person that God is intending for you to be by yourself in, in your own human effort. You still need the help of the Lord. So you're not going to still be perfect on your own decisions and your will and what you're doing and the choices you're making. You still need the help of God. So I have to sometimes try not to beat myself up, you know, when I still slip up or I might still find myself kind of doing things and my thoughts and my ways still. I'm still kind of allowing the past to haunt me. I'm still thinking about my past and allowing that to kind of control my thoughts for that day and or I'm into the future it's like I I'm never a lot of times I'm, I'm I, it's like I, I refuse to be in the present or be in the now because I'm either thinking about my past and could still uh, not forgiving myself completely for the things I've done wrong in the past and then if I ain't doing that I'm in the future because I'm worrying about what's gonna happen and you know what's and what's gonna happen to me and am I gonna live to see this and is things gonna change am I gonna get any of the things that I've been praying for like I'm just it's like a, a lot of the times I'm not tr I'm not uh, enjoying right now and you know I got to get better in that so again like I said this this live may not even be for somebody else it's probably for myself so I can just I double back uh boomerang back and check my video out and maybe like oh okay there you go that, that's it right there ebony but anyway so um you know so that brings me to saying like you know when you're struggling with sin because again we're all still sinners we're not perfect with we're, we're new in christ now right for the christian friends out there that's that you know you can say you're not where you once was right you definitely a changed person you definitely are living to please the lord you are definitely training to be godly you're definitely trying to just uh make better decisions and you you including god and in everything you're doing so this is your new journey you on right a new routine for you a lot of uh for many of us throughout the day now because at one time out in our routine many of us was oblivious much like myself i just i wasn't I wasn't thinking, I didn't, I wasn't aware about a lot of things and the decisions that I was making, I just was ignorant in a lot of things and I wasn't thinking about nothing, I wasn't thinking about serving others, I was just kind of just thinking about myself in a lot of my ways, very selfish at one point in time. So, you know, even though I'm in this new path now, I'm still going to make mistakes, I'm still the same imperfect person, still the same person that's going to sin and fall short of the glory so uh, that means I still struggle you're still going to struggle with sin because the Bible clearly says we still have that flesh that's in us that flesh that's a part of us that the Lord himself created so it's a part of us that the Lord gave us that we have to we almost have to battle against and try to conquer it which is the flesh which is inside of us so that sounds kind of crazy right like well if it's a part of me how am i going to detain it or or control that part and answer to the other part so this is where the part this part of the bible study here where i want to really delve into that part where it says for those of us that are struggling with sin so i'm coming from the book of romans um chapter seven and so i'm going to start at i guess i'll start at 14 i'm gonna read the whole thing which says struggling with sin so the trouble is not with the law for it, it is spiritual and good the trouble is with me for i am all too human a slave to sin i don't really understand myself for i want to do what is right but i don't do it instead i do what i hate but i know that what i am doing is wrong 
this shows me that I agree that the law is good. So I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in the sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. So I'm going to start right there because that sounds like a bunch of gibberish, right? Like that sounds like just what in the world? When I very, when I very, when I first started really trying to delve into the Bible and really started like really cracked open the Bible itself to start like, okay, I'm on a journey to read this Bible because I'm, I, I have a goal in my heart, um, to a, a bucket list goal to like really become savvy in this Bible. Like I am determined to uh, understand and learn this word and understand it so that I can be more confident in God so that I could be more confident in my walk. And so that this word can help me. Cause again, the, like Paul also said that the, the word is, the, is our sword of in the spirit, a sword of the spirit, right? That we need to take with us in this fight, in this good fight of faith. And you know, in, in these, uh, when we're sta trying to stand firm against Satan and his schemes and his strategies with us, um, one of the main things that, that we need to hold on to is that sword of the spirit, which is the word, because it helps us to counter those things. So like sometimes when you have having issues with whatever issues that you're having in your life, whatever season you're in or whatever your plights are, you, th there's something in the word that can help you to get through it. And so anyway, so, but I, I had at one point, well, not at one point, but I started saying to myself when I felt myself finally changing and turning around and turning my leaf to saying, okay, I got to be more committed to God. I was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm about to learn this book. So at one point in time, I was like, you know, excited about just reading period. Cause I ain't gonna lie. I was never really inclined to wanting to read a lot. I kind of just didn't care to read. I was one of the type of people that judged a book by its cover. If the book just didn't look interesting, I just wasn't going to read it. I just really didn't care to read any darn way. So that was one of my problems. And so I wasn't so inclined to really reading. So of course, when you thinking, okay, so the first book you about to pick up after you, and when you finally decide that you want to start reading, you about to pick up a Bible that is very complex has a million words in it, tiny words, and that's the book that you want to pick up. But yes, because that is the source. That is the book that's going to give me the foundational knowledge that I need to move forward with anything else. Well, that's just, this is just my, my belief. This is just my, um, you know, my conviction in it that, you know, all the books in the world that I could pick up and try to educate myself on and gain more knowledge on it's still good. Not saying that no other books is going to be helpful, but this right here was the source to all of it. Cause for one, I got to, and whatever it is I'm trying to take on or conquer or, or grow in or gain or whatever, I still got to have the main things that's going to get me through to those avenues. I got to be able to have the faith. I got to be able to have the energy, the vitals. I got to be able to have the power. I got to be able to have the sound mind. I got to be able to uh, walk in courage and I got to be able to be bold. And all of those things cannot be done without the the God without our without our source, which is God, and understanding Him and understanding things, and then on top of that, the, all the other elements in life that's outside of that um, that could con con conflict or, or be conflicting or whatever against you, you wouldn't a lot of those things you wouldn't even know how to attack it or tackle it or deal with it or or get through it or whatever if you didn't understand what was happening and going on because like again back being transparent when i was going through what i was going through I, I i struggled even more because i didn't understand what i was going through i didn't even understand about satan's role I thought, I mean, of course, when you, everybody knows about Satan and the devil, you know, everybody knows it, but do you understand his role to know that when you are experiencing those, uh, seasons and, uh, and understanding how the devil works, now you can be a little more confident, right? To stand firm against him. Or when you're going through, uh, the troubles, the trials, the hardships, the sickness, the pain, the whatever in the seasons you're going through. You wouldn't even know how to deal with it or try to conquer it or stand firm or not give up if, if you didn't have 
the root of the word to show you or tell you about those things. So a lot of the stuff that I, I experienced and, and how bad it took me down, it was because I wasn't knowledgeable in the word at all. I didn't draw near to God at all. So when I started, when I went through those things that I went through for those years, I, I didn't know how to get through it. So I was struggling. I was struggling badly on top of, you know, the, the mental suffering that I went through. I still uh, just struggled even more because I wasn't knowledgeable at all about how I was going through it, why I was going through it and uh, my own sins and, and why I'm going through what I'm going through and how that the season, like none of that stuff. I just wasn't, I wasn't ready to deal with what I was dealing with. I wasn't ready for the crisis that I went through because I, I wasn't uh, versed in God and understanding none of it. Okay. So, so, um, where am I at? So, yeah. So, you know, basically I, I felt like, you know, when it, when I was ready to finally pick up the book to learn out at, like I said, at one point in time, I was just so eager. Like I, I want to start reading books cause I need to get my vocabulary up. I want to be able to speak better. Now I want to be able to hold a decent conversation where, um, you know, I can articulate better. I just wanted to seem a little bit more like when people talk to me, I don't have to just sound a little silly, you know, and, and, and so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm determined to like read more, which that still was good because I still needed to do it. Um, and I was just determined to do it that way. But then I was like, no, I, I definitely need to go with the source. So I said all of that, sorry, there was a lot of gibberish just now, but I said all of that to say that, um, you know, I was determined to be versed in this word because I knew, I knew that that was going to be the source that I really needed. And I'm just glad that I'm glad that I did because, you know, now that I know what I know now, I'm able to kind of just get through, you know, what I'm going through now, get through it a little better. And so, um, so anyway, back to what I was saying about struggling with sin, we all are still going to sin, right? Christian friends, we all going to still fall short of the glory. We're still going to miss our mark. We're still going to have temptation we're still going to have the the world the 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 snares the evil traps that fall upon us the things that just can cause us to uh get that meet that crossroad of making a bad decision that could cause us to sin that can cause us to fall again that can cause us to turn away from god again all kind of things that's coming at us so when you know i, I wanted to really talk about though like how you know, when we struggling with sin and that whole part about just saying, like, I don't really understand myself or I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate, but I know that what I am doing is wrong. That shows that I agree that the law is good. So I'm not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that's doing it. Like what in the world? So let's talk about that real quick, because like, like, I guess for me, when I really read that, I was like, it's even now it's still resonating with me because not even if you're physically out there sinning, like, you know, robbing a bank, stealing from people, um, uh, hating people and treating people wrong and out there physically persecuting people or physically um, blaspheming God. Even your thoughts can can lead to sin, right? Because you have, you know, people have thoughts on in, in their mind all the time. Your thoughts can be negative. Your thoughts can be positive. So sometimes those negative thoughts, because again, your thoughts and your words, like 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 the word said, like um the power the the power of death lies in the tongue. I'm sorry, the power of life and death lies in your tongue. So your own words, can, if they're negative, it can work against you. And so even so your thoughts. So sometimes as you think, that's that's what you can bring to fruition. And for a very long time when I was going through what I was going through, I was already pessimistic because I was, you know, just feeling um, rejected in life. I was um, a very sensitive individual, very emotional. And just when I felt like things wasn't working for me the way I wanted it to go in life, I was, you know, just, I was very pessimistic. So I, I, I was always just thinking negative. Always, always, always. I just never tried to look at the positive in things. So, um, I, and, and at one point I felt like 
it's just best to look at the worst in things because that way if I already if I'm already thinking the worst then when the worst does happen I don't have to feel so bad I guess like thinking well I already was thinking it anyway so if it really does happen I ain't got to set myself up for more disappointment so and that's how I had become and I again just never thinking positive and already had deemed myself that you know nothing good was gonna never happen because nothing good my life wasn't going the way I wanted it to go so I just was just speaking so negative over for myself and I didn't even know that that was so harmful to me I just thought like you know well this is all I know and you know if nothing good is happening for me which at the time you know I, I was I was labeling those things in the wrong way because a lot of it came from me my and my own bad actions and my own uh faults and, and uh, sins that brought me to a lot of those points and situations that I that I brought, brought myself in. And so I was labeling it the wrong way. But at that time when I was just in it, it was just like, okay, well, nothing good is happening for me. So what's wrong with me already thinking like, well, nothing good ain't gonna happen. And so that way, if I, if, 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 if I still keep getting disappointed, I already thought the worst of the situation anyway. So here it is. So, um, uh, so I said all that to say that, you know, even if you ain't physically out there sinning or doing harm or doing wrong or, or hurting somebody or harming yourself physically, your thoughts can still be just as bad because your thoughts can lead to actions and all of that too, right? So I wanted to really delve into that part because I know that that is still a struggle or a plight for me, right? Because I still have times where I, my thoughts get the best of me. I'm worried a lot. I still have doubts. I still have fears. I still try to figure things out and I just, it, it makes me feel fall short it makes me uh procrastinate sometimes it makes me sit still to where I don't want to do anything and it's like well ain't no point in me doing it because if this going to end up happening or whatever whatever just trying to come up with my own uh conclusion in life or come up with my own scenario that I done painted a thousand million scenarios on my life you know and thinking the worst and and uh I forgot where, where this came from but it was like um I, I thought so much, every bad thing that happened to me in my life, every bad thought that I had never, and never happened. So I sat there and wasted all that time thinking so negative and thinking this is probably going to happen to me and this means this and this is what's about to happen and none of it ever happened. So I just sat there and put myself through so much extra pain thinking the worst and none of it ever happened. So... You know, back to our thoughts, though, sometimes our thoughts, we're, we're sinning in, in our thoughts because we're thinking the worst. We're thinking all kind of things. And, you know, from the outside looking in, you don't know what nobody's thinking. You don't know nobody's thoughts. Like the word says, you know, who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit. So you don't know what people are thinking. But for those of you much like myself where you can con you you are. um you convict yourself of your thoughts because you know that now that you're understanding now and you're on that new path and you understand like, wow, boy, the way I was thinking one time before, that was bad. And like even now, so I, I convict myself a lot when I have when I have those tunneling, spiraling, out of control thoughts that I don't want because I don't want them, but they come. So it just reminded me when I read this word, it just really had pinched me, boy. It was like, oh, shoot, boy, this is, this, is, this is me right here because, you know, it's like I really... I don't understand like when I be trying, I'm trying to think better. Sometimes the bad thoughts still come um, I, and I don't want to be thinking negative. I didn't mean to uh, speak so much negativity over my life. I didn't mean to do that. I, I want the best for myself. I, I mean, especially being somebody that was spontaneous, a go-getter, very ambitious and driven and wanted what I wanted. And I guess, yeah, it was just a lot of misguided zeal. I wasn't like just out there just living to uh, just not care about nobody else, but I had had selfish ambitions and but you know I, I I wasn't meaning to speak so negatively negative negatively over myself I wasn't doing that intentionally but that's where my mind was at and I was just trapped in my own pun I was punishing myself and I was in my own prison I was a prisoner in my own mind of of those negative thoughts and so you know like it said here it says but I don't understand myself like, you know, I, I want to do what is right. And in my case, I want to think what is right, but I don't. Instead, I think the way that I hate thinking. OK, and so and I'm also speaking to the person that, that might be out there physically sinning. Right. You know, um, fornicating, committing adultery, um, lying to people on purpose, harming folks, um, cheating others, uh, being 
mean and persecuting others, physically harming them, bullies, uh, murderers, you know, all of us who sin that I'm not, I'm not judging none of you all. I'm just naming, you know, the, the sins that, that you physically can do that that's not in your mind, but you're physically actually doing the sin, you know? So it's like, for those of you that your heart convicts yourself and you like, what, what is going on with me? Like, I want to try to do what's right, but I can't. I want to do good, but I don't. But instead, I do those things that I hate doing. And it's like, why? How is that happening? But it does because it's your flesh, right? It's your flesh, a part of you that you can't control, that the Lord gave you, that's happening. And you got to try to learn to answer that spirit and try to, you know, live in a way that pleases the Lord. And, and, and so, you know, but just back to what it's saying. So it's like, but when that, those things happen, so I guess I'm here now to encourage you about when when it happens, when those thoughts or those actions do happen that you know you didn't want to do, you hate doing what is wrong, but you do it anyway. You're trying to do good, but you don't. You want to think better, but you can't. And still the bad thoughts come, the worrying thoughts come, the same thoughts that you just said, Lord, please take away these thoughts. Please take away this lost, lustful passions. Please take away this um, the, the demons and the evil spirits that's in me of hate and uh, or greed or lust or... Um, envy or jealousy all of those evil uh sinful de uh, uh emotions that take over people that can cause you to sin and do wrong and, or lord take away this unforgiving spirit of mine or help me to be more compassionate but then you still turn right around and still think or do those things that you you already know you don't want to do so then you know as just to encourage you as the word said is sin living in you that does it because we were born in sin you know, when Adam and Eve, when Eve did what she did and, and sin fell upon us, which then brought on death because of, of their actions and what they did. You know, we were born into the sin. So the sin is going to happen. You know, of course, we got to just, again, live to please the, the Lord and carefully determine what pleases him to, to help to uh, help on our behalf to do better and make better choices. But it's sin that living in you. So it says, um. Like it says, so if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. Okay? It is sin living in you that does it. So when those wrong actions come that you have convicted yourself of, of and you know it's wrong or after you've done it, you just completely feel so guilty or ashamed and you know it was wrong. That means it was sin living in you that did it. It wasn't you that did it. Now, don't blame everything on sin. It doesn't mean to keep on sinning and doing wrong. Don't make a practice of sinning. But it shows you that that flesh that's in you, that sin that's living in you, that we were born into, that's what's doing it. Especially if you can turn around and say, you know, um, you can convict, convict yourself of when you have done wrong and you like, I know that's wrong. Or when you are at a crossroad and, and uh, you have to make a decision and the one of the decisions may be a wrong decision because you know it's wrong. You know that it's going to lead to you getting in trouble or lead to you messing up or doing something bad or wrong. And you, and you know your heart is convicted and saying, I shouldn't be doing this. So if you can convict yourself of certain things, that means that um, it shows you that you agree that the law is good. OK, so but I just wanted to encourage you, encourage us and even myself, like when you do have those failing moments of messing up and uh, you did end up sin sinning or you did your, your thoughts just still come over you where you thinking wrong and you thinking um, those those thoughts that you just don't need right now they're distracting you and and just so much going on in your mind and in your heart and and, and it did cause you to end up actually sinning or doing wrong because i mean again even thinking negative and thinking that type of way is not good either it's still sinful because again it lead it can lead to it so when you having those thoughts and the actions you know, and if you can convict yourself that it was wrong, then that means it's 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 not you the one that's doing it. It's the sin, excuse me, y'all, it's the sin that's doing it. So it says here, I have discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am right 
Because I mean, I sometimes I am in, I am like, just like, what? It, Lord, I done prayed, I, I done prayed and cried saying, Lord, take away these thoughts that I don't want. Um, you know, I know, I, I know that I desire some, my heart desires some things and I'm out here wanting it so bad, but Lord, help me to wait on you and help me to trust in you. Even with me saying, Lord, help me, help my heart to trust in you with all my heart. But then I still turn around and I'm trying to get answers, you know, from the world or, or I still end up, uh, just my faith still is wavering, not because I'm deliberately just not wanting to believe in God, but you know, my faith still wavers because I still get scared and worried. Cause they say, if you're going to pray about it, you know, do not be anxious about anything, but instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. And if you're supposed to let go and give it to God, that means you're supposed to choose that faith over your fear. And if you're choosing the fear, fear and faith don't exist, coexist together. And so I struggle with that sometimes because I pray so much, Lord, let help me to trust in you with all my heart. And then still still turn right around and I'm scared again or worried again or or I'm still saying Lord take away you know the the jealous spirit that might be in me or take away the envious spirit that might be in me or take away the the passion of of me desiring you know waiting waiting on you God for my husband or whatever the case may be and so sometimes you know thoughts come in our mind all of us we've experienced it and so when it happens it's like Lord I just done prayed to help take that away from me but it still comes or when you know that you're meet, meeting that crossroad of doing something that you know is not going to please God but you end up finding yourself caught up in it anyway you know for instance like you know I'll just use myself as, and, as an example you know in past relationships you know trying to give give the man a chance and then it still don't work in my heart I already done said that you know this man ain't good he ain't you know he's not the one because he's already showing you the red flags he's not uh uh showing you that you know he he believe he's understanding your journey and he's you know in this on the same page with you with trying to you know devote yourself to God right and devote yourself to and being committed to God and putting God first so you already know he's showing you all the red flags but you're still in denial because you just at that point, you still, you're still desiring to want to be in a relationship so bad. So you're still willing to put aside what you know you shouldn't be doing and get yourself into it. Now you don't got yourself caught up in the relationship. You don't got your feelings hurt again because now for whatever, whatever. But the Lord was trying to tell you this ain't the one for you, but you're still trying to give it a chance and all of that. And you find yourself just caught up into the relationship of doing, you know, the stuff that you shouldn't be doing, but you're giving this man a chance because you just thought maybe that was God telling you that was the man that, that was for you. But come to find out that ain't the Lord that could have been Satan or just your own uh, desires of wanting to be with somebody. So you're moving too fast instead of letting the Lord really show you and open up me because you know, you will you know. And, that, and that's, I mean, again, I'm speaking to myself when it comes to that. So. You know, when I'm just using that as a, as an example. So now, now you done found yourself caught up in sin again. And now you're feeling bad. You're feeling ashamed. You're feeling guilty because it's like you was trying so hard to do what is right. You tried so hard, hard. Lord, I tried so hard to, um, you know, to, to commit to you. And I still end up getting myself caught up in this thinking that maybe this was that that you showing me that this was my opportunity or whatever, even if it could be for opportunity for a job or opportunity to move or a opportunity uh, for whatever it is that you might've been praying for. And you thought that that opportunity or what came about was from God. So you thrusted yourself into it because you thought yeah, this must be God showing me this. And sometimes it ain't the Lord, you know, and then when you do get yourself into it and the Lord is speaking to you, showing you like this ain't it. Cause your heart done convicted yourself. Like something ain't right. Something still ain't right about this, but yet you still in denial or you're still trying to okay well i'm gonna still i'll give it a try i'm gonna still keep on going because maybe 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 i should keep trying it and the lord has already done touched you to say like no this ain't it this ain't from me but you're still doing it and we've all been we've all been there i've been there and then i look up and i'm back to that lord what did i do again oh lord i wasn't this I, i'm sorry because i wasn't trying to disappoint you i wasn't trying to displease you i'm trying to live in a way that pleases you and i'm still messing up and so we convict ourselves and we even sometimes condemn ourselves feeling guilty and feeling ashamed so Christian friends, how do we, how do I help you through that? Or what is best in that situation when you, everything that I just talked about, if that's you. So it says here where it says, uh, but, uh, there is a, another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person that I am. 
Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. Whew. So y'all, all this time when you was condemning yourself and, and feeling ashamed and just thinking that the Lord just so angry at you that you just ain't gonna come out of it you know and you tried so hard to please the lord you tried to do what is right but you didn't you want to do what's right but you don't you try not to think bad but you do anyway all of those things that just it's just confusing and just too much go like i don't feel like all that i don't feel like going through all that with me trying to do right and i still end up messing up anyway i don't feel like that and but it happens and you're going through it and you just like lord i keep on messing up but thank god the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see how it is in my mind. I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. So the life that's in the spirit, right? It, going on to Romans chapter eight, where it says life in the spirit. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power <clears throat> of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body that's like the bodies that we sinners have. And in the body, uh, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. So basically, if we just follow our spirit and not that sinful nature, all of the, the things, this, the, the, uh, the wrongdoings are falling, falling short. And the fact that we do fall short of the glory, we still going to make mistakes that's why Christ died for all of that and and I'm on I'm saying that to say to myself because I still struggle sometimes where it's like Lord you know are you mad at me or, or is everything gonna be okay am I doing okay Lord am I am I making the right choices am I uh, are my efforts okay to you I have to like Lord, I hope this video, I can keep on coming back to it because I will have my times where I'm back to a square one of just condemning myself and just feeling the worst. But it's just, it says here, y'all, that again, um, he did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us and who, uh, for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. And, uh, so basically it says there's no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. So basically he died for us. He died for those same mistakes and those things that we're going through and the shortcomings and the fails that we're making. That's what Christ was for, for that reason. Okay, so those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law and it never will. That's why those who are still under control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the spirit if you have the spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. Okay, and Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the, uh, the same spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. So um, I, definitely you got to, if you haven't, you got to just read this part and really understand it for yourself. But I just wanted to encourage you all and encourage myself because, again, I have those moments where I'm just like, I, I'm trying to do what's right, but I can't. I'm trying to do what's right, but I can't. I want to do good, but I don't. But. When I'm like, Lord, I'm just a terrible person. I'm still trying to do the best that I can. And I still keep messing up sometimes. Lord, is everything okay with me? Is, is my efforts okay to you, Lord? Uh, am I on the right track, Lord? Guide me. Guide me. But when I ask for guidance, I still see like I'm messing up. So, Lord, are you guiding me? Lord, are you actually working in me so that I can do better? I mean, uh, honestly, am, am I... As, Am I being genuine enough in my turnaround and wanting you to change the way that I think? Am I doing okay? Because I still seem to mess up. But 
there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And so he gave his son for this very reason. So I have to just stick to that. And that's what I want you all to hear. Not saying it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean that the journey of deliverance or your journey of being delivered and changing and doing what's right is going to be easy or that you're still not going to mess up. But, you know, just sometimes these words, you can come back to it when you need the, that sword of the spirit. So, so that way when Satan is trying to just tell you like, oh man, you done messed up so bad. You ain't going to get nowhere. You, the Lord just upset with you and you done, you know, he going to get you and you ain't, you ain't going to get nowhere. You, that ain't, you ain't going to get what you deserve. You're not, the Lord ain't going to redeem you. The Lord ain't, can't change you because you just messed up so bad. Um, you're not forgiven. All of those things when, when the condemnations really sink into you and you just really c condemning yourself and just feeling so ashamed and so sorry for yourself. Just we got to keep on fighting this good fight of faith. We got to keep on keeping on. Like I said, it ain't going to be easy. My battery getting low. Um, but nonetheless, we just got to just continue to. And even and, and I have to say that to say this to you all that. Sometimes I have to just say to the Lord, even when I do mess or even, even in my moments when I do worry and doubt or whatever, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief, my doubts and my fears so that I can fully and wholeheartedly trust in you. Lord, help me in this journey so that no matter what, even if I don't get the things that I'm praying for, and then that caused me to doubt or that caused me to feel like, um, you know, Lord, are you hearing me? Or Lord, are, are my prayers ever going to be answered? Help me, Lord, not to turn back to the world. Help me not to conform back to the world. Help me not to practice sinning again or or uh, or turn back to my fleshly desires and that carnal mind and start answering to it. No, Lord, I still want to stay, continue stuck in, in my journey with not, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say stuck, sorry. But help me to continue on my journey with you no matter what. Help me to not deviate to the right or, or the left, but help me to, to stay in your word. Minister to my spirit and give me that, that word that I might need to stir me back up. Because, Lord, I don't want to uh, result back to the world again and wanting what the world wants for me. And, and, and uh, getting that, that tickle in, the, in, in my ear from the devil and then deciding it or, or trying to figure out, should I, should I choose this and choose that? No, I still want to choose you, God, no matter what. I still want to serve you, obey you. Um, I still want to... Um, submit to you, commit to you, trust in you, but help me to do that because I'm str it's a struggle. So Krishna friends, thank you for sitting me with that, sitting through this uh, live with me on that. And I hope that, you know, this can encourage even one. And like I said, it, maybe it's just for myself because I might need to turn this video right back on after I close this live out and come right on back to it to encourage myself. But Lord, I just need you to work in us to help us, Lord. Give us the desire and the power to do what pleases you, Lord, because we don't want to um, keep on... Um, sinning we don't want to make a practice of sinning we do want to live to please you we do want to live to be godly we are trained we do want to train to be godly but like any training physical training it ain't fun it ain't easy it can be hard it can be discouraging sometimes you want to give up so that's the same type of training for the spirit right so in those moments when it comes lord help me help us lord help my christian friends lord and we need you and um christian friends i just want to say thank y'all for tuning in with me you can always review um some of my other videos of me just speaking a word and giving a word um, you can follow me on my Instagram, Christian Adorn, Instagram at Christian Adorn. You can follow me on my Facebook page, Christian.a.apparel. You can also uh, follow me on my YouTube channel, Godly Models TV. And um, I'm, the long as the Lord uh, give me breath of life, um, Lord, help me to continue to serve you <coughs> and obey. If it's a, something that's speaking to my heart that I need to get out there, Lord, uh, give me the boldness to do it and use my tongue, Lord, speak through me so that I can speak what is pure, right, and true of you, Lord. And I hope that what I am saying is pleasing to you and that I'm speaking the truth. And, 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 and so and that's, that's all I really kind of want to, so I can do this right. But um, but thank you for watching, Kristen friends. Uh, you can always, if you are wanting to purchase any of my godly expression tees, you can definitely uh go to christianadorn.square.site and you can just look check out all of my uh, merchandise, my godly expressions. But I just want to say thank you all. Um, hopefully I will see you all again very soon for my next pop up Bible study. Check you later.